Do I have to explain everything? Oh my god, okay. I wish I brought my thermos of coffee. Okay, all right, ready? <laughs> all right, hey everyone. <laughs> I'm Claire, we're in an undisclosed location in New York State in front of my new garden and my new chickens and my new compost bin. And I got some chickens yesterday. I'm gonna see if we have any eggs and make a custard. already bored of this project. <laughs> Step one of 20. <laughs> Just to be clear, I'm bored of building the coop. I'm not bored of having chickens, which I'm loving so far. It's been like one hour. I had no idea this was gonna be like shot for like the show. I thought we were all gonna come out here and help. I love that you guys are all standing around watching Claire. <laughs> you need to suffer a little, Claire. Oh, Harris. Huh? I've, I've suffered plenty. That's what people are missing from, you know. The suffering? Yeah, they're kind of cute. They're so cute. We're on step number six of 19. So I got a little, <laughs> a little bit to go. Next is the nesting box floor on top of bar six. This is the part I'm worried about. Welcome to your new coop. Get it, get it. built a coop, although we're not finished building it, but it got dark. And Cal brought four chickens and they've been in the coop all night and we're gonna see if any of them laid an egg. I was thinking of what to make with my first fresh egg, obviously something egg focused. So I thought maybe like a baked custard, like a creme caramel, because that is basically egg flavored. One of them might lay a blue egg. I knew nothing basically before yesterday, but Cal is my uh, chicken keeping guru. So I know that I can't keep him cooped up too long. I gotta let him out and run around. And they tilled the garden a little bit yesterday looking for food and I'm gonna feed him this morning. This is my compost bin or like Turner, what is it called? Drum? Tumbler? There we go, tumbler. And I have a ton of coffee grinds and food scraps from the kitchen, but I'm gonna save some of it to feed to the chickens. So I'm gonna put, I have eggshells from earlier. Ay, ay, ay. How do you know when it's too full? Ah! I laminated the instructions and put them on both places. Composting tips so far, but it just takes a really long time to, for everything to compost. I saved some leaves and stuff for, as the hell is this? Um, whatever it is, it's Harris's fault. And then, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but then I just put some of the dry stuff in. If it looks too wet. This side has to like t cure and go for a couple weeks and then we only add to that side and that's the new side. Am I doing it right? Sounds cool. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm learning and trying to learn how to garden. I go through a lot of like fruit and stuff when I recipe test, and so composting is a great way to repurpose all my kitchen scraps, which are significant, and add it to the garden. So I'm working on the garden. I got seedlings inside and now all of a sudden I have chickens. Okay, little chickies. Hi, hi, hi. Breakfast, breakfast. Come on. Not the smartest animals, huh? Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Nope, 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 nope. Go ahead. Oh, good job. 
job. <laughs> now do I see if there's eggs? Oh my God, I see an egg. Oh my God. It's perfect. Did you guys plant this? Mm -mm. Take this out of the kitchen. Cool. I can't believe they laid an egg. God, I love eggs. I think that if I went vegetarian, I couldn't give up eggs. Of all the things to give up, I could give up meat. I can give up, well, dairy would be tough, but I could do it, but I don't think I could give up eggs. I love eggs. So do I lock it every time? So you don't forget. Okay. I brought them some scraps, but I'm gonna go grab their feed. What are you doing, Claire? I'm trying to figure out how to fill this drinker thing. Ooh. Oh God, I'll, I'll come back to that. All right, ladies, back it up, back it up. Here, here, oh God, okay, there you go. Never did I ever think I'd have chickens, but here we are. I thought I was gonna get two, turns out I got four. Bisquick is the, the blonde one, that was, the chicken that Cal raised for Vinny, but then Vinny wasn't allowed to have chickens in Brooklyn. So now Bisquick has a new home. Three cats, <laughs> four chickens now. Can I pet one? Does they eat? Uh, you can try it. Try picking one up. I'm not picking one up. Bisquick, <laughs> come here. Bisquick looks a little agitated. You're already my favorite. Come here. All right, well, maybe later. This is a lot. So I leave the coop open and they can go in and out? They may go in and lay an egg. How do you know when they've laid? There's an egg in there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right now, I am in a cabin that my husband and I bought about six months ago. We don't have a proper kitchen. There's no cabinets. It's a work in progress, but I've been doing a lot of recipe testing here and it's still very functional. And for the first time ever, I'm gonna bake with <laughs> eggs straight from the chicken today. And by the way, when I was out there, I only found one. And then in the last couple hours, the other three lay their eggs, including this blue egg. I feel like I'm living in an issue of Martha Stewart, minus the part where I don't have any cabinets. Um, all right, so I think that in the spirit of making something egg flavored, I'm gonna make a very straightforward custard. So I'm gonna make a creme caramel, which is a dessert that I love and I feel like I don't really make enough. So it's a very simple custard, which is milk, sugar, and eggs. And it's set in a thin layer with another thin layer of caramel on the bottom and then you turn the whole thing over and it makes like its own caramel sauce. So delicious and I just think using really fresh eggs is gonna be incredible. So equipment, you'd need a couple bowls and a whisk, a saucepan, and I'm gonna get out a pie plate. I'm gonna bake a larger creme caramel instead of individual ones. So I'm gonna use a nine inch pie plate, a glass one, which I have right here. And then you'll also need something to bake the creme caramel in a water bath. You'll need something wider than this and it'll pour some water in, like this big guy. Oh God. heavy. <laughs> Everything's fine. So this will, the whole thing will bake in the oven at a low temp with a little bit of water surrounding it in the skillet. I'm going to actually just set this in the, in the oven already. Have that ready to go. So I need some milk. I'll use got some Ronnie Brook milk. I don't have any vanilla bean here, so I'm going to use some extract. I have, this is my recipe testing supply of, of uh, vanilla extract. So typically, creme caramel, sometimes you see a recipe that uses all yolks and that's super rich. Sometimes you see one that uses whole eggs um, or a mix. I'm gonna use whole eggs because I wanna use my whole fresh eggs. So four of those, some salt, and some sugar. So I'm working on an electric stove, which is not my typical cooktop, but almost, I mean, 
there's only a few cases where you can do something on gas that you can't do on electric, so it doesn't bother me. And I have it on high at the moment. So with a dry caramel, you're not dissolving the sugar in water first. So you're not creating a solution. You are going from sugar in its solid state to sugar in its melted state. So it's a, in some ways, it's a slower process and requires a bit of patience, but all you wanna do is start with a thin layer of sugar on the surface of your saucepan. If I were doing more sugar, I would probably use a skillet so I had more surface area. And you don't want a lot. Basically what we're doing is getting this really hot and waiting until we visibly see the sugar melt. So it'll go from granules to a clear liquid. So I can see it's starting to melt because there's a patch that's going translucent in the center. So I'm just gonna wait a little longer. Is that normally where you stand? No, I normally stand there. <laughs> I just really like to be close to my recycling bin. I'm just sprinkling another layer on top, but keeping it really thin. And then it's, it goes quick like that. The next layer then disappears and melts. I've been recipe testing from this kitchen a lot. And it's really nice to actually be in a space where I think even more than I normally would about, you know, getting, getting a piece of equipment out or or, you know, making dishes or that kind of thing. So I feel like it's, um, it's been really helpful for my process. Okay, so now I'm stirring because it's getting a little golden. So I'm going to continue to actually just stir in more sugar. You can see it's liquid. So you just want to avoid like big clumps because that is going to take a long time to melt. So you don't want something with too much or not enough surface area because both can lead to burning. Provided that you don't burn it, a darker caramel will give you more of those bitter sweet notes. And creme caramel can be really sweet, and so I like taking this pretty dark because then you get a nice contrast between the caramel layer and your custard layer. But this is looking good. I'm gonna take it off. Now I'm just going to pour this into my pie plate. I haven't greased it, nothing. Try to swirl it around so that it covers the full surface. And it will immediately start to harden. So you wanna tilt it pretty quickly. As it bakes, that caramel will um, dissolve again. And so that'll have a nice even layer. I'm gonna use this same saucepan to heat up the milk. So I don't mind that there's caramel still in it because it's just gonna give a little tiny bit of a caramel flavor to the custard and that's not bad at all. Sometimes you'll see a, um, a caramel, a uh, creme caramel recipe that uses like half and half or even heavy cream. I kind of think that's a lot. It's a lot of richness. And so I like whole milk, but use like a good whole milk. Cause again, there's like four ingredients in this whole recipe. So use something good quality. So two cups, go ahead and stir, stir that in. The pan's still hot, and basically, the, I mean, the caramel is hardened, but as I heat this milk up and warm it, it will dissolve the caramel. And that's fine with me. So let me bring this over to the stove. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt at this stage, let it dissolve. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon. It's kosher. So now this goes back over to the stove, and I'll bring it up slowly. You don't wanna like boil milk like crazy because it'll boil over and get all over your stove, which has happened to me about 150,000 times. While that milk comes up to a simmer, I'm using four whole eggs. So it might mean that the custard has a softer set, but I really wanna use the whole eggs. So I'm just, I can't believe I'm using ones right from my yard. I'm gonna crack. Let's look at them. Wow, first of all, that yolk is huge, which I'm pretty excited about. I've never, I've never had eggs this fresh, but what I love, I can tell how fresh it is because the white holds together and it's like very tall. It's, it really is so, there's so much volume to it. Felix, get down, get down. So I'm gonna keep cracking. And the yolk is just huge and so orange, which I like seeing. You know that you don't have a good egg that if the shell is really thin and the yolk is like really yellow and that was not a happy chicken. But I would like to think that these are very happy chickens. Well, look at how orange that one is. I like, it's funny, they're all very uniform. 
for the most part in terms of the size of the yolk, but then that guy is just a little more orange, which I love. By the way, the caramel has totally hardened. I'm gonna add the rest of the sugar to the recipe, another half cup, and I'll whisk it with the eggs. Wow, look at how orange this is. This is gonna be, it's gonna be cool to see the final color of the custard because the yolks are gonna really make it very, very vibrant. I've never seen eggs this brightly colored. So whisk this really well. This is a step that's called blanching, where you are mixing the eggs and the sugar together. So if I were making this with vanilla bean, I would scrape the vanilla bean and then throw the pot into the saucepan with the milk as well. And then as it's coming up, it's infusing with the vanilla. But since I'm not infusing anything in the milk at the moment, I just need it to come up to a simmer and then I can pull it over here. Oh, by the way, my oven is preheating to 325. I should also set my kettle. I'm gonna boil some water to have it for my water bath. So I'm gonna press the button on my kettle. There's already water in it. This is a process called tempering where I'm gonna take my hot milk mixture and my eggs blanched with sugar and slowly pour the hot liquid into the eggs. And this is to prevent curdling. So this is gonna slowly raise the temperature of the eggs. So pour slowly. We're gradually raising the temperature of the eggs. This is what's gonna produce a very smooth, creamy custard. So here's my custard mixture. So this is custard. I mean, it's not cooked yet, but it's my custard base. There's little cracking noises from the caramel, which is sort of expanding a bit and cracking or contracting, one of the above. Okay, but that doesn't matter. And that, those are gonna go away anyway. My kettle just shut off, so that's at a boil. But basically, this is my custard base. This is eggs, sugar, milk, and I'm gonna add a little vanilla, and it has a bit of salt. And that's it. So we'll call that two teaspoons. So I'm gonna pour the custard into the pie plate, gently. I'm gonna fill it to the top. I have a tiny bit left over. Can I fit it? Sure. I wanna place this carefully inside my skillet that's in there. I am gonna keep it covered, not only to help me move it without spilling it, but also that's gonna protect the surface when I pour the water in. I don't wanna pour the water, I don't want it to get into the custard. I want it to only be around. Oh my, oh God, oh God, oh God, it was too full. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna have to clean egg off of the skillet. All right, so don't do what I did, which is just spill a whole bunch of it. Perhaps I overfilled it. But now I'm gonna do my water bath. Ignore the scrambled eggs on the surface there. All right, so I'm most of the way up the sides. There's gotta be a better way to do this. And I'm gonna lift off the plate. Okay, now this is gonna bake very gently. It'll probably go 35 to 40. I'm not quite sure what the set is gonna be like because I'm using a whole egg, so it might go, it might set more slowly. So I'll check it. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. There will be um, a wobble, not a jiggle. I'm gonna invent some kind of a water bath setup where you don't have to like do stuff like this. It feels really dangerous. Oh God. Okay, all right, well that worked. I'm gonna let it actually sit in the water bath, let it cool off, and then before we turn out the creme caramel, uh, I'm going to chill it. You wanna eat this dish cold, actually. A wobble is like the whole, the whole thing moves of a piece. Is that the right phrasing? And it's not, I've said this before, but it's not like the, it doesn't ripple. I'm not getting little ripples that, it, that were 
a different section of the surface is moving at a different time. The whole thing is moving together. So that's what you want to look for. If you have a jiggle, not a wobble, you got to cook it longer. I just want to cool it until it's not hot. So maybe, maybe 30 minutes and then I'll stick them in the fridge. And it should really chill for like, I would say, you want it to be cold. So I would say at least an hour or two. So it's chilly out now. It's like 36 degrees. I'm going to leave this out here until it's cold and then we can turn it out. And um, I was just tapping it and the, the texture is, it's set, but it's not rubbery. So I don't think it's overcooked and I'm actually pretty excited. So just maybe leave it out here in the open air where it'll cool down a lot faster than in the fridge. I just don't want it to get like leaves on it or dirt. So I'll probably do like this. Okay. That split it. Oh. <laughs> you know, power versus aim. It's a real give and take. Now just don't take it out. Oh yeah? It oh, and like, yeah. cow, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> it's really heavy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is ash because look at the ash beetle has done that's why the tree was dead because the beetle burrows and eats the membrane between the bark and the wood and then the bark just splits right off I don't know if I'm going to be able to split this it's a little thin <laughs> and cut. I cut around the sides to loosen. It's freely moving around. So the flip. Sometimes the caramel runs, so I might get some on the counter, but it's a... Uh... <laughs> it's a little lopsided. I'm going to cut a slice. It looks really good. Really, really good. I'm so excited to eat this. The texture is pretty incredible. It's so, it's like perfectly set, but it's so like tender. Oh my God. I don't know that I've ever cooked such a perfectly set creme caramel. Look at the quiver. All right. This looks, I have to say, I'm quite excited. And this is made with my farm eggs. Oh, are they farm eggs or just fresh eggs. And then I can scrape some of the um, caramelly juices on top. See this? One dollar at the warehouse sale. I'll have half a cup of coffee. I probably drink 12 ounces of milk a day just in my coffee. I'm going to go outside and have my Mid-afternoon, well, late afternoon, well, evening, snack. All right, follow me, guys. Mm. It is very eggy and delicious. It just might seem a little atypical to have an egg-flavored dessert, but... It works, and it's so good. Mm. I overcooked it a little bit. That's fine, though. It's really delicious. Next time I would... Oh, dear. Running across the... See them? Yeah, two of them. There's probably, like, five more. There's always a bunch. Oh, there's that. That one's close. Hey, lady. Sorry, back to the flan. Next time I would watch it a little closer. Maybe keep it covered. But good news is I'll be getting four more eggs tomorrow and every day after that. Cannot wait to cook and bake with more of these and, you know, do more work on the homestead. Hopefully have a kitchen soon, like a proper kitchen with cabinets and shelves. 
and then we'll hopefully be doing some shooting up here. More dessert person videos, maybe bring some guests, feeling optimistic about that, and this will be our, um, our next set. I'm pretty excited about it. My hands are cold. Ooh. Thank you for watching, and like and subscribe. Here's your buffet. Your breakfast buffet.